Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about a DNA repair process called nucleotide excision repair. So N-E-R. And we are just going to briefly cover the overall steps in this process. If you want to learn more about the proteins and, and how DNA molecules are uh, damaged to DNA molecules are identified and how the damaged DNA is cut out and the proteins involved in those, well, I encourage you to take BSC 350 here at Illinois State University where we cover mechanistic details such as uh, those involved in nucleotide excision repair. So this video is a continuation from the last one on xeroderma pigmentosum and complementation groups. And essentially what happens is in all of us, not just individuals with the genetic disorder xeroderma pigmentosum, if we go out in the sun and we don't have a really good sunscreen on, is uh, the UV rays and sunlight cause damage in our epidermis and our skin cells. So one of the reasons why, you know, I don't like to go to the beach, and my family loves it, we go to the beach every year, and oh man, I hate sitting out there in the sun, because I know is, well, this diagram's a little too big, uh, essentially, I wanted to diagram two thymine residues right here. Is the, our skin cells, the DNA in our skin cells, is being damaged by the UV rays, and we're getting these pyrimidine dimers formed. Pyrimidine dimers. So, here we go. So we have two T's, two thymine nucleotides next to each other in a strand of DNA. They absorb the, the photons from the UV light, causes a rearrangement of the electrons in the nitrogenous bases, and we get these two covalent bonds formed between these adjacent thymines. And we can also get them between C and T's that are next to each other, and two C's that are next to each other, but most commonly it's between two thymines. Now, okay, we go out in the sun and we're getting tons of damage, tons of damage. And for those of us who don't have xeroderma pigmentosum, our cells can repair most of this damage. So they can go through and repair most of this damage, but they can't get everything, right? And that's how skin cancer develops. If we get enough mutations that aren't repaired by nucleotide excision repair or another repair process, uh, then that can lead to, to skin cancer. So how does nucleotide excision repair work? Well, we can divide it into five steps. So if you take a look at the lecture notes, I've divided it into five steps for us. And I'm gonna combine three and four in this video because they're very, they're very closely connected. But I'll list five because that's how I did it in the lecture notes. So in the first step, we're gonna say NER proteins identify the damage. Am I recording? Yes, I am. So they are identifying the damage. Again, take BSC 350 if you want to know the identity of these proteins and how they identify the damage. For now, we'll just say uh, generic nucleotide excision repair proteins identify the damage. So these are proteins that the, the cell uh, has to look out for types of damage like this, like pyrimidine dimers. So second step, other NER proteins cut out the damage. So it cuts out, these proteins cut out a single strand. And that single strand spans about 25 nucleotides on either side of the damage. So let's say, I'll diagram the damage here. So 
So let's say that's the five prime end, three prime end, three prime, five prime, and here the th here's the thymine dimer right here. I can connect them. Now we have proteins that identify this damage here. We can call this call this a DNA lesion too. A lesion is a DNA lesion is a is a fancy name for a damaged area of DNA. Now, let's say this is about 25 nucleotides to this point right here, and there's about 25 nucleotides to this point right here. And so these NER proteins, what they'll do is they will cut out about 25 nucleotides on either side of the damaged DNA. So we're gonna get something like this. So, okay this thing is released as a single fragment. Okay, so now we're left with this giant gap. So for three and four, we have NER proteins recruit DNA polymerase to the damaged area, and then DNA polymerase fills the gap. Okay, so what's that going to look like? Now, okay, so DNA polymerase is going to be recruited to the area. It's going to fill in this gap. And what side is it going to start from? Is it going to start from this side over here? Or is it going to start from this side over here? Right, so DNA polymerase is only polymerized in the five prime to three prime direction. They need a free three prime hydroxyl to use as a primer. So it's gonna start from this side. There'll be a hydroxyl on the three prime end. The polymerase will synthesize this way, and then it will leave a gap, or a nick, not a gap, a nick. So there'll be a phosphate group over here, hydroxyl over here. Now, remember, nicks, in DNA, so they're just nicks in one of the strands, and all the nucleotides are there, the nick is just a missing phosphodiester linkage. So the fifth step, and we can say N NER proteins recruit DNA ligase to seal the nick. So the DNA ligase is going to come in here and it's going to seal this nick right here. Okay, and that's how DNA or nucleotide excision repair works. So we get lots of primitive dimers in our uh, epidermal cells and the proteins involved in nucleotide excision repair identify the dimer, cut out the damaged area, and recruit DNA polymerase and ligase to fix or fill the gap, resulting in a, a repaired DNA molecule. Now, in the previous video, we studied or we learned about complementation groups, and we found that, okay, there are at least three proteins required for nucleotide excision repair. I think there are like seven to 10 that are, are, are known to be um, directly involved in this process and lots of aux uh, auxiliary factors too. So what, what, it, what would these do? Well, we could say maybe A is in charge of identifying the damage and B, maybe B is in charge of cutting, making the cuts. So in the DNA, and maybe C is in charge of unwinding the DNA, right? Because these are going to be twisted around each other. So you need something that can come in and unwind the strands and separate the, the damaged strand from the non-damaged strand. So what they do is not really that important. Um, again, because we didn't really talk about specific genes, I just want you to think about how these proteins could be involved in the process and where they might function. So another thing we talked about in the last video was UDS, so unscheduled DNA synthesis. Turns out the unscheduled DNA synthesis that James Cleaver 
was was um, observing was this step right here, right? Was when DNA polymerase comes in and fills the gap here. So he had an assay that allowed him to detect this step of the nucleotide excision repair process. So that's it for nucleotide excision repair. Next lecture, we will take a look at two other repair processes, homologous recombination repair and non-homologous end joining. And then we will take or start discussing um, gene regulation in prokaryotes. Okay, well, see you in the next video.